get it started with Prep. He's in his first year at his alma mater as the head coach, and he's guided second seed in the defending state champion in the Car Cougars, now 11 and 1, to the 4A state semifinals as they shot out Franklinton 26 to nothing in the quarterfinals. They now get the pleasure of rematch with their rivals and neighbors in district play, Landry Walker, in the semifinals this Friday night at a site to be determined. <laughs> I think he's got an idea, but stay tuned. We'll let you know immediately as soon as we know where that game will be because no doubt many people would like to see it. You should. We'll be that good. Please give a warm quarterback club welcome to Coach Nathaniel Jones of the Endicott Cougars. Coach. Was, I believe it was 26 to nothing. 
um, against a, a really, really good Franklin team. Um, you know, we have Landry Walker going uh, coming out this this week, which is a big time rival rivalry game if you're from Algiers. Um, you know, uh, my mother went to Walker. Uh, my my father-in-law used to be the principal at Landry. Um, and our kids have cousins and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles that, that, that attend Landry Walker. So it's, it's a big time family affair and no one wants to be at the back end of that line. Um, but the game prior to that, that we, we, the, the game that we had earlier in the season, I didn't think we were very disciplined at all because we got caught up in the emotions of the game. And I think it was like over 300 yards worth of penalties in the game from both sides. That's crazy. So, uh, you know, we, we tell my guys is, hey, be focused, stay disciplined, and win the day. You know, and if we do those things, we'll be fine. I, I, don't, I don't worry about that. We'll be fine. But, um, you know, I think our guys are really hitting their stride. They're playing focused. They're doing those little things, and they're actually playing quite, uh, quite disciplined, and I'm very pleased with that. Um, so, you know, big challenge uh, coming up. And, you know, God bless us, say the same. We're up for the challenge and come out victorious. Uh, I guess the next step is to ask, is there any questions for me? Yes, Coach. I was at your game uh, Friday night, and uh, you have 90 and 91 on defense. Are they seniors? Are they being recruited? Who are they? Uh, secondly, uh, the Kenner Stadium, Los Bernalino, was, was a nice facility, but uh, do you think – the issues with Berman and, and Joe Brown, whatever those issues are, over two for Orleans Parish as far as getting something that fixed. You um, think that's a possibility? Because it's it's a it's a shame that y'all schools can't play in the parish where y'all are located. And secondly, um, what do you think of the split between select and unselected? Where where do you think it will go from here? Thank okay, you. Let me, Good let luck. Me, okay. Um, thank you. Let me tackle the, uh, the the Berman Stadium. You know, it's it's a shame that you know that we can't get things to work properly um, at Norman. Uh, you know, Carr has been to several state championships in the last 20 years of their existence as a high school program. Um, I, if I'm not correct, it may be the only Orleans Parish traditional public school to actually win the state championship. Um, and with that being said, you, we know all the things that go on in our city. You know, the violence, the crime, and all of the, the things that come with New Orleans. But we're doing something positive for our kids, and actually, I think we're dropping the ball by not having them to be able to play in a venue, um, which they're quite familiar with, um, which is a place where the community can gather, and do something positive, you know. Um, we're working through that um, with NAR. Um, hopefully it's something that'll be corrected. Um, as far as uh, Gerald Willis is number 90, and um, Isaiah Washington, who's uh, number 91, uh, Gerald Willis is actually a senior. Um, he's recruited, he's been recruited by everybody in the country. I think he's kind of, kind of narrowed it down to uh, Florida, LSU, Alabama, and Texas A&M. So SEC programs, um, you know, I just tell our guys, you know, when you're making a decision, do what's best for you and your family, you know, because that's, that's the most important thing. Do what's best for you and your family, and we'll support you, and we'll, we'll educate you, and give you all the information that you need from us but do what's best for you and your family. He's a tremendous football player. Whoever gets him, you know, I think they're going to get a stud. You know, I don't know if he'll be a, a Glenn Dorsey or not, you know, but, you know, I think he's in, in that type of player. Uh, number 91, Isaiah Washington, I have to actually kind of try to slow coaches down from offering him early, you know, because I'm not really big on the early offering because sometimes it – it spoils the kids and then they get the big head and then they don't work as hard as they once did. So it's been a couple of coaches that said we're going to offer him. I'm like, coach, just hold up. You know, it's the first week of his, his junior year and you're trying to offer him. 
you know, he's about 6'5 and 255 pounds, and he can run, he can move, and uh, he makes a lot of plays for us. Um, you know, uh, tremendous kid off the field. Um, I think he's like a 3.0 GPA. Um, until you've seen the kid and met the kid, you know, I can't do him justice. I, I, I was just thanking his father the other day for, you know, the type of man he's raised. Um, you know, but Ike is one of those one of those really, really good kids. And you hear a lot about him in the future, um, but he has another year with us. Uh, the select, non-select, uh, I'm not necessarily a proponent of it. I think it kind of waters down our football. Just my opinion. Um, I like to see us all together. I think uh, it makes Louisiana football uh, better overall. I, I, I don't think our state is big enough to where we have nine state champions, um, just in my opinion. Um, and my thing is, it, and, and we're, we're a little bit fortunate at Carl, we have a football tradition, um, and we'll play anybody, anywhere. Um, so uh, I don't mind, you know, whether it's John Curtis or St. All, we play both of those guys this year, some games you win, some games you lose. I just, for the overall all Louisiana high school football, I think it waters it down a little bit if we have like nine state champions. So, you know, that's my take on that. Coach, um, you played Walker Landry earlier this year in beat him. And um, first off, that game is going to be tried to play at Vernon. Say again? That, that, that game Friday night is going to be played at Vernon? But it's just not determined yet? To be announced. Okay, okay. All right. Probably Vernon or tag only. Um, we're working on it now. Okay. Joe, Joe Brown, stadiums are in last two. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, but going back to my original question, um, as you saw in the St. Hall normal game, it's hard to beat a team twice in one year. Uh, is that a very big concern of yours? And, and uh, how do you keep your players focused on beating a team that you've already beaten this year? Um, I don't think we have to, to really, you know, get them rod up, rod rod, to get them geared up for this game. First of all, it's a rival game. It's going to be a, a hard fall game, either way it goes. Um, secondly, we're looking at the film, and like I said, it was like almost 300 yards worth of penalties. So with that being said, they can do a lot better, and I know we can do a lot better. So, um, and I think we're a different team. I think, uh, you know, the trust level with myself and the team is a lot better. Um, just understanding that who we are, we know who we are now, um, and just we must play discipline to, to have success. You know, there'll be a whole lot of athletes on the football field, but the team that's the most disciplined is going to win the game. You know, the team that, that, that does the little things will win the game. And so that's what, you know, we're putting the emphasis on that. And we're not necessarily concerned about, um, and, 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 and I, I say this, we're not necessarily concerned with Landry Walker, we're concerned with Carr, and if Carr's discipline, we'll be fine. Coach, speeding up, uh, how fast is he, and what position do you think he'd do best in at the next level? Um, you know, how fast, fast enough, <laughs> you're not going to catch him. You get a step on him, you're not going to catch him. Um, I think he's about a 4-3, you know. Um, tremendous athlete. Tremendous athlete, 45 inch vertical. That's unheard of uh, from a high school kid. Um, you know, I, he, we use him all over the place. You know, if if, if I were a school, I, I would use him all over the place as well because he he can take it from the running back position um, and go to the house. You, you put him at slot, or you can put him at split end, and he'll beat any DB you have. He can actually, you know, can go and play corner and end up being the best corner in the country. You know, I think on the next level he could be even used there. Um, you know, so I, I think that's up to the university that he decides to go to decide how they're going to use it. Um, but he can play so many positions. If he really wanted to, I think he could be a quarterback because he can throw the ball as well. Um, you know, we played against John Curtis early in the year, and he actually was hurt that game. Um, and John, JT didn't know it, but uh, he didn't know he was injured. So they never blitzed him, but he just sat back in the pocket and threw the ball all over the place. So even if he wanted to play quarterback, he could be a quarterback. So.
All right, thanks. Thanks for having me.